everyone, and welcome back to part two of our 2023-24 Upper Deck Series 2 case break. We are now on to the next two boxes. Uh, our first two were rather uneventful, albeit with some nice pulls. Our top young gun is probably Connor Zary, with Kevin Korczynski being second. We hit one deluxe of Joel Farabee, other notable inserts for Pink Dazzlers of Adrian Kempe, and then the uh, Austin Matthews black and white young gun, or not young gun, regular canvas. But yeah, uh, oh, and we hit a retired canvas of Mike Bossy. So some cool stuff, but nothing spectacular. So let's go on to these two boxes. I was going to do top down, but let's go across the top. Uh, just because, you know, then we get two boxes on each side. So here we go. Let's get into the next two boxes again. Um, I just finished. So what I did is I edited the first video so I know kind of what the format's going to look like and then came back and so you see the camera angles a little bit different and that's why uh, just wanted to edit it make sure it looked good make sure it flowed pretty well and i think it did uh let me know your thoughts on it as well most of this series is going to be recorded in just a couple of days because i also have to price these just for singles for the shop so yeah here we go it is busy again we got the case breaks later tonight uh, well, not later tonight. It'll be uh, it'll be yesterday night. But you can go and check them out on our group break channel at um, it's just Zephyr Epic Breaks. In case you're curious to see how they went. And here we go. Next box. This is box number three. All right. Let's. Hopefully, we can get a Bedard soon. You know, you average about one point four would be the average. One point four four. Yeah, would be the average. So Watson, Watson, on the director of boards. Uh, Raphael Lavoie again, so second Lavoie. Uh, not a bad one to double up on. Again, he's in that C plus tier, but I do think he has a lot. Like, he has more upside. It's just I wish he showed it at the NHL level already. So, um, and we have the Hartman Outburst Silver with just some pretty standard base cards. I haven't seen a base variation yet. Um, we'll go back through and check once we're all done, but they're normally pretty obvious. And the other thing I would like to point out with base variations, if you're ever confused as to whether or not you have one, uh, you can scroll through and look through a bunch of base and it'll be pretty, I'd say pretty obvious to pick it out. But also if you see a deluxe or a high gloss or a clear cut, like any other parallel, that's going to be the base picture. So if your base card looks different from that, then you probably have a, a clear cut. All right, next monster season, we got the October 24th matchup against the Oilers or against the Oilers, against the Penguins. Uh, Edmonton scores four goals in second period to secure a 6-3 home win. Uh, he posts a plus one rating in the game, so that's probably like the worst one to get. One of the worst ones to get, at least when you got 153-point season. Uh, there's an instinctive, and ooh, that's Seth Jones, so that looks kind of kind of nice. All right. Next pack. Yeah, so far it feels like a pretty fun set. Again, I love the refresh that they did. Big fan of it. Uh, I think it suits the product really well. PCs here of uh, Kaprizov with a little bit of chipping at the top, but nothing major. Teasdale on the base young guns and a Sagan canvas behind it. So um, moving forward throughout the rest of this, if we do pull a like new subset card, so something like, you know, uh, Program of Excellence Canvas. I'll be sure to try and throw up the pack odds just like the previous boxes. Um, yeah. Let's see what we got. We have a Ecliptic. Oh, we have a clear cut, I think. We have a clear cut, and I think it's a Young Gun clear cut. Sfozil. All right, all right. Stanislav Sfozil on the clear cut Young Gun. I have him in the three plus, in the three plus C plus tier. Um, I like his game. I think he is a very, very solid defender. He played with Connor Bedard in junior, but um, I think his upside just a little bit more limited as a defenseman. And who's that going to knock off? It'll knock off the will knock off the fair B and move the Zeri because clear cut young guns are one per case, um, typically on average. So uh, nice pull there, and yeah, pretty happy with that. All right. With uh, Cole Gutman behind it. Yeah, I'm I'm thrilled with that. I, I like clear cut young guns. One of my favorite cards to collect. Uh, I'm a sucker for the acetate cards. They're just really, really cool cards. 
So yeah, happy. Uh, Keller on the PCs, uh, Deep Roots and Andre again on the Young Guns. So it looks like it's kind of a similar crop to certain like series one and series two years. You'll see just uh, players kind of grouped up together. And so if you pull one, you can kind of guess who you pull. But given that we hit both, I think we hit both Andre and uh, Lavoie in the same box. So just something to keep in mind. And last pack on the first half. Well, I'm pretty happy with this box. Clear cut young gun. That's a that's a case hit. Ooh, we have a oh no, we have a PCs on the uh Sparkly Boys uh of Crosby with a Bo Horvat canvas for the Islanders and a Dustin Wolf on the Superstars. That's a upside down base card. I don't think that's anything. I just think it's literally backwards, but I'm gonna stick it to the side just in case. We'll sleeve up the Crosby PC sparkles too, just because it kind of, it looks nice. So yeah, looking forward to doing this whole case, seeing how many Bedards we can get, um, seeing what else we can find, what other secrets hide in here. I'd like to find, you know, maybe one or two Easter eggs if possible. So, all right, let's go. Got uh, our second pink Dazzlers, Kairu. Here we go. Ryan Reeves on the director of boards and Kesselring on the young guns. Kesselring is having a good year for the Coyotes. Just in terms of underlying numbers, he's been pretty solid. Um, overall, not the like not going to sell the most, but just a good solid young gun. So, all right, let's. Sorry, my mic is just not wanting to stay in the uh, in the right spot here. There we go. That's better. <laughs> it just slowly droops down for some reason. I fixed it, but uh, it's like every once in a while, it's like, oh no, it's blocking my vision. <laughs> All right, here we go. Next pack. What are we going to get? Uh, PCs of Jason Robertson, Deep Roots of Thomas Shabbat, and uh, Maxon Scunette of an honor roll. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Keep it rolling here. We have an instinctive of Vili Huso. Clay Stevenson on the base young guns. He is my sleeper for the set. Um, he actually has never technically played in an NHL game, which is really funny. Uh, you can also tell because his background photo is warm up. But um, Really, really sol solid save percentages at every single level he's played at. So lots of good hope there. Thompson on the canvas. And honestly, like, I think you're just going like, to... Goalies values are always the ones that tend to skyrocket if they start doing well in the playoffs. I'm not saying Washington's going to make the playoffs anytime soon. But if, he do if they do, he's probably going to be a reason why. Or if he signs with a different team. But lots of potential there. Kempa on the ecliptic. Bergeron on the deep roots. And Matthew Scorinato. On the honor roll, he's been a little bit disappointing, but it does take a little bit longer to transition to the NHL than years prior. So that's why you see some rookies have struggled to adjust. Oh man, this Tage Dazzlers is beautiful. That blue on blue, oh, chef's kiss. Anytime, I really wish like there were more team color parallels of stuff because it just looks so much nicer. I don't know. Uh, instinctive and a Beecher on the young guns. Uh, Beecher is kind of just like, you know, depth option at center, I think, for long term. I'm um, not super high on him, but I think he'll be like bottom six guy. But upside, I think upside there is fairly limited. That being said, it is Boston. They do tend to get more out of their prospects than literally any other team. Uh, we have a sparkle parallel of Braden Point on the ecliptic, Petrangelo on the canvas, Nesterenko on the honor roll. So there's the first, well, box three, which was, I'd say, good. Um, got the clear-cut young gun and a decent one, I would say. Uh, there are a lot of ones that I would have rather not gotten. I think there's, I'm thinking it's probably like, he's probably right at that like 20-ish young gun for me, so trying to count here um because there's about 
10 to there, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, he's right in that like 20th range. So think about, you know, two fifths are better, three fifths are worse, and that's fine. I'm for that. I'm, I'm, again, not everything's going to be an absolute, you're not going to pull the most, like, the best cards every single box, um, but we are getting some really cool stuff, and that is one thing that I think Updeck has done a good job with their flagship stuff this year, is that you do tend to get a lot of cool cards per box, so let's go ahead and let's get into the next box here. All righty. Uh, Stutzla on the PCs, uh, Deep Roots of Matthews and Teasdale on the Young Guns, the second Teasdale. We'll go through at the end too, maybe we'll make like one follow-up video just with kind of everything we got, or maybe I'll just tally it in the end type of thing or post a link in the description below. Um, just for like what we pulled, I don't know, we'll figure it out at the end of the bit, end of the series, what we'll do there, but a cool recap I think would be a good idea, so. Uh, instinctive of Kakanen, Zach Benson. There we go. That's a good young gun. Really like his game. No idea how he fell to where he fell in the draft, but that I would say is our best young gun pull. Uh, Korczynski, you were in a previous box, so you get to just go into the box and a Mason Marchment outburst. Yeah, nice Benson there. Big fan of his game. I think he's got real top six potential, or top six first line potential, like superstar potential. Monster season, Oilers versus Leafs. I do wonder if we'll see certain games be more valuable than others, like Leafs ones, Penguins ones, just because they base some left in the matchups. But uh, this would be three points with a goal and two assists. Uh, Makar and Horvat. That Horvat picture looks kind of weird. Yeah, I wish the only thing I wish for the monster seasons is that they're like a more iconic game photo, but I get how that doesn't work with the foiling too. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, director of boards of Marcus Foligno, Luke Phillip on the young gun. I have him in the C tier. Um, one of the very few forwards who actually comes from um, skaters in general and players in general that actually has come from the U Sports program in Canada, which is essentially the NCAA equivalent, except it's bad and there's not really a ton of support for it um, up here. So very rare to see a player come through that and reach the NHL. He did. Matt Murray for the Leafs. Um, but there's some offensive upside there. Uh, he missed the bulk of this year due to having to get Achilles surgery. I think he's just starting to come back right around now. And given the state of the team, you know, they might give him a shot in the lineup. And if he does well with Bedard, who knows? Kind of the one thing about Chicago moving forward is that if anyone pairs well with um, Bedard, the value is probably going to go up. So Tutsla on the Ecliptic, Mangiapani on the Deep Roots, and Levi Miralainen on the Honor Roll. Yeah, that Makar faces. That'd be one where if you're like playing and you see that, you're just like, oh no. All right. Next up, Dazzlers, Lucas Raymond. He, speaking of players that have been doing good, he's been doing pretty good. Uh, John Gibson on the Instinctive and Maxence Gounet on the Young Guns. Gounet on the Young Guns. Uh, I think I have him at a C minus. There's some offense there, but I just don't see enough to really, and like, I don't see him becoming a top four defenseman at the NHL level. Obviously, can surprise, but just, I don't know. It's it's tough to predict them. Ooh, nice sparkle of PD on the ecliptic. That's nice. Uh, Tyson Berry on the canvas and Matthew Nyes on the honor roll. Love PD. Love his new contract. Great deal for the Canucks. All right, moving forward. We have... A uh, Sparkle Director of Boards. So this is new. Sparkle Director of Boards of Sam Carrick with a Terra Vinen canvas and an Owen Beck 
on the honor roll. Yeah, the honor rolls just feel like they're missing something to me. I don't know what it is. It's whether it's here or whether it's um like the size. They just they feel like they're just missing something a little bit. So I like to see those and like maybe the director of boards parallels like cleaned up a bit. All right. Let's see what's hiding in this pack. Oh, we have a fluorescence. Panarin. Oh, the fluorescences look nice. Panarin for the Rangers. And uh on Arnold Durando on the fluorescence. Man, these cards are sick. Like, if you get the Bedard in that in the red or any parallel, those are absolutely sick. Yeah, those are those are cool. Uh there's the back of them. These are I want to say two or three per case on average. Um, you know what? We're going to get rid of the Connor Zeri as much as it's a cool looking, as much as it's a high valued card. We're going to put our cool looking cards up there too. Cause I mean, that's just, a, that's just a sick looking card. Matt Murray on the honor roll. Yeah. I, I like those. Those are cool. So typically you get, it's either, I think it's one of those, a young gun canvas or a like, or like a black and white parallel type of stuff in it. It's not, oh, it's probably just a sparkles of like instinctive. Ooh, oh, I think this might be numbered. Uh, I think this is an instinctive gold. This might be numbered. I thought these were, maybe they're not numbered, but maybe they're just super rare. Uh, but Tristan Jari on the instinctive gold parallel. Uh, some of the gold sparkles are numbered, I believe. Some aren't, but that one's. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool looking card. I'll try and save a regular one so you can get the comparison. Uh, Josh Brown on the director of boards and Matt Tompkins. Uh, I put him in the D tier just because he played NHL games this year. Didn't look good in net. Mind you, Tampa Bay in general looks beatable this year. So, um, but yeah, I just don't see him really reaching that. Like, I think he's like third, fourth, at least third string, if not fourth string in Tampa Bay. So, I just don't see that path forward that you really like need. Uh, we got uh, Dylan Larkin on the PCs, Deep Roots of Zach Wierenski, and Ridley Gregg on the honor roll. Oh, well, he's not on Morgan Riley's honor roll. All right, final pack. Pretty, uh, pretty solid little box here. Here is a regular instinctive of Hellebuck. So again, this is kind of like the gold sparkle kind of probably super rare we'll put the exact pack odds up but and damon hunt on a young oh program of excellence in behind uh damon hunt on the base young guns uh, i think i have him in a c minus there's some offense there just not sure on that full-on upside and then a program of excellence of simone gagne so these are same as a retired canvas one in 92 96 packs so pretty uh Pretty nifty little insert. I'm shocked we didn't get an Adam Fantilli one, to be completely honest. I thought Fantilli would have been a shoe in for it, but all right. That's the next two boxes down. Overall, I'd say lots of fun. We have a brand new stand, like definitely replace the stand. I, I like that. In terms of cool hits, we got the instinctive gold sparkle parallel. I'll post the exact odds on the screen when we pulled it, so you'll have seen them by now. Um, got some nice dazzlers, so we shouldn't have any more of the pink dazzlers left in our case, but man, that Tage blue on blue, absolutely beautiful card. Love the Crosby sparkle PCs. We got two of the monster seasons, and then obviously a bunch of young guns, the program of excellence of Simone Gagne. And then um, I guess Benson will be like, kind of, he's probably our like most valuable hit, I would say, but um, his full zills are rarest in terms of like just one per case. Really like it. Decent clear cut young gun, I think in like the top half, but barely. So I like it. I'm a fan of it. Could do a lot worse. And then the coolest card is definitely the fluorescence. I hope we get a good rookie in this, especially Bedard. The red on red, man, these cards are going to pop. Um, yeah, that is our next two boxes. So stay tuned for tomorrow for our boxes uh, five and six. Thanks for tuning in. Again, if you enjoyed, leave a like and maybe consider subscribing. If you've got any comments, leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, we are doing a raffle for all of our series two products. The raffle is open until Sunday. So uh, just there'll be a link in the description below if you want to enter that uh, for Canada only. 
And then, yeah, that's really about it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, let me know what your thoughts on the product two days in. And yeah, take care. Have a good day and see you tomorrow.